Even though he didn't win a championship, LeBron James played arguably the best basketball of his career in 2018. Clutch shots, playoff buzzer beaters, single-handedly getting the coach of the year fired, and one of the best performances in NBA Finals history are just some of the highlights of LeBron's spectacular 2018 run. Here's why the 2018 season was probably the best and most underrated year of LeBron's storied career. Regular season. Before we dive in and explain what was so special about LeBron's 2018 playoff run, we have to mention a few things from the regular season. Like all teams who managed to pull off consecutive finals appearances, LeBron's Cavaliers dropped off significantly during the 2018 regular season, during which they coasted and pretty much just waited for the playoffs to begin. The Cavs struggled all year to replace the high-scoring production of Kyrie Irving, who famously demanded to be traded after the 2017 finals, under the presumption he wasn't prospering as a Robin to LeBron's Batman. Irving's replacement, Isaiah Thomas, came to the Cavs with one healthy hip, and he and some other new pieces like D. Wade never fit in. It all resulted in a colossal roster reconstruction at the trade deadline, during which the Cavs had sent six players out and received four players back in a desperate attempt to salvage their season. And despite all the turmoil, bickering, and second-worst NBA defense, the Cavs had one constant they could always rely on. Of course, we're talking about King James, who was in his 15th NBA season and had played in all 82 regular season games for the first time. At the age of 33, LeBron also led the NBA in minutes per game, which speaks volumes about his preparation and dedication to his craft. LeBron finished the regular season with 27.5 points, 8.6 rebounds, and 9.1 assists, and was a runner-up for the MVP award behind James Harden. However, what LeBron did in the regular season is largely overshadowed by what he had done in the 2018 playoffs. First round versus Indiana. From the very first game of the 2018 playoffs, it was clear that making it to the finals again would be an uphill battle for Cleveland. The Pacers were led by all-star Victor Oladipo, and they took game one in Cleveland with a 98-80 final score, despite a triple-double from LeBron. In game two, LeBron realized that he'd need to take much of the scoring burden by himself. He went on a personal 16-1 run in the first quarter and was the only man to score a field goal in the first five minutes of the game. James finished with 46 points on 71% shooting to pull away with a one 197 victory and avoid an 0 and 2 series deficit. Propelled by Croatian sharpshooter Boyan Bogdanovic, the Pacers took game three and were on the brink of winning game four, leading by one with three minutes remaining. But the James V12 engine proved to have just enough power to close out the game in the Cavaliers' favor. Game five, same story. An extremely tough game under 100 points, with both teams exchanging leads throughout the night. The score was tied at 95, with less than 10 seconds to go, and Indiana had the ball. Oladipo decided to take the final shot. He drove to the basket and was brilliantly denied by LeBron, who blocked him without fouling, also keeping the ball in bounds. In the final possession with three seconds on the clock, LeBron got the ball almost at half court, took two dribbles, and pulled up a deep three over Thaddeus Young. Splash! The ball went in, and LeBron once again proved how clutch he really was. Indiana then took a dominant win at home to send the series back to Cleveland for Game 7, and if they didn't know it by then, LeBron sure reminded them that when his back is against the wall, that he usually delivers in a big way. James took out his DIY kit and gave Cleveland fans another playoff masterpiece. 45 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists, and 4 steals in a 105-101 to victory over Oladipo and the Pacers. For the series, James either scored or assisted on 60% of Cavaliers' points, averaging 34.4 points, 10 rebounds, and 7.7 .7 assists, and hitting over 55% of his shots. Lebronto The Toronto Raptors had the best season in franchise history in 2018. They won 59 games in the regular season. Lowry and DeRozan were all-stars, and Dwayne Casey won the Coach of the Year award. Toronto had a deep team, and it seemed like they would finally get over the hump and beat LeBron James in the playoffs, especially after Indiana pushed the Cavs to the brink of a first-round loss. The Raptors were a far better opponent for the vast majority of Game 1, but they managed to squander a double-digit lead in the fourth quarter. Toronto never trailed once for 48 minutes, but LeBron's clutch turnaround jumper in the last minute tied the score at 105 and sent 
the game to overtime. In the OT, the Raptors kept missing, and the Cavs were able to steal Game 1 on the road, powered by LeBron James's triple-double. Game 2 was close at the half, but then turned into a blowout. LeBron dominated once again in a 128-110 victory, finishing with 43 points and 14 assists. And even though they lost two games at home, the Raptors were a resilient bunch, and they weren't going down without a fight. In a close Game 3, it was the Raptors who were catching up to the Cavs the entire time. But due to an excellent play from Kyle Lowry, they got within distance, and then OG Ananobi tied the game with eight seconds to go. The Cavs called a timeout, and everybody knew who was going to get the ball in the last possession. King James dribbled the ball the entire length of the court, made a move to the left, and then let fly an extremely tough and contested running floater. In Duncan-esque fashion, the ball went in off the glass, along with the buzzer. Game over. 3-0 Cavs lead, and another heroic game by James, who scored 38 points. After that, the Raptors completely fell apart and lost Game 4 in a 35-point blowout. They got swept by LeBron and the Cavs for the second season in a row, after which Coach of the Year Dwayne Casey got fired and DeMar DeRozan got traded to the Spurs. LeBron averaged 34, 8, and 11 for the series and was an inspiration for many mean memes on the internet, while LeBron Toe became the new nickname for the biggest city in Canada. Conference Finals versus Boston Boston was considered the toughest team LeBron had to face in the Eastern Conference in 2018, and the Celtics fulfilled those expectations by winning both opening games at home. Around the same time, Saturday Night Live released a sketch about the Cleveland Cavaliers not named LeBron James, mocking how little help LeBron got during the playoffs. Our point guard is a Roomba, hot potato offense, just pass the ball right back to LeBron, and other jokes that were exaggerated, but not that far from the truth. LeBron had to build every possession from the ground up, and if he didn't score or create an open jumper, his teammates would swing the ball right back to him, almost without exception. Braun was always a pass-first guy, but he had to turn more into a Jordan rather than Magic in these playoffs. It wasn't because he wanted to score a lot, it was simply because of a necessity and a complete inability of the rest of the team to do anything. Such a high offensive burden left a toll on James's defensive output, and for the first time ever, we could see LeBron gasping for air for stretches of the game. However, the Cavs managed to tie the series back home, and LeBron was especially brilliant in Game 4. He went off for 46 points on 17 of 28 shooting from the field and was absolutely unstoppable when the Cavs needed him to be, which was often. The Celtics took Game 5, and for the fourth time in his career, LeBron faced a 3-2 deficit against the Celtics. As you can probably imagine, he responded in a huge way. In Game 6, he led the Cavs to victory with 46 points, 11 rebounds, and 9 assists. In Game 7 in Boston, he silenced the crowd with a huge 35-15-9 performance carrying the Cavs to another NBA Finals. In the series against Boston, Braun averaged 33.6 points, 9 rebounds, and 8.4 assists, and was again responsible for over 50% of the Cavs' offensive output. NBA Finals vs. Golden State Four years in a row, the same stage and the same actors. Golden State Warriors versus Cleveland Cavaliers. Steph against LeBron. Only this time, the balance of power was clearly against LeBron more than ever before. Steph was flanked by three other all-stars in KD, Clay, and Draymond, along with a defensive ace, Andre Iguodala, while LeBron had a mini celebration every time he saw a teammate reach double figures in scoring. Nobody believed that the Cavs had a chance against the Warriors, but even against four all-stars, and after a grueling seven games against the Celtics, King James still had plenty of bullets left in the chamber. In Game 1 of the Finals, he played arguably the best offensive game of his career. The only game comparable would be Game 6 of the 2012 Eastern Finals in Boston. James steamrolled his way to the rim like a bulldozer. He effortlessly hit mid-range fadeaways like an oversized Kobe Bryant, and then he'd look like Dame Lillard by draining a pull-up three-pointer from 30 feet. With a minute to go, he had 49 points next to his name. It was one of the greatest Finals performances of all time. But it'll forever be remembered as the J.R. Smith game. J.R.'s decision not to call a timeout or attempt a shot four seconds before the end of regulation was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in sports. The man didn't know what the score was and believed the Cavs had the lead, which tells you everything you need to know about LeBron's support in these playoffs. In overtime, completely angry and emotionally spent, James mustered the strength for just two more points, and the Cavs lost the game by 10. LeBron's 51 points are the most a player has ever scored as part of his team's 
Finals loss. The Cavs lost the second game as well, in which Steph broke the Finals record for threes in a game. They lost the third, even though the Splash Brothers combined for 7 of 27 shooting and 3 of 15 from three. And as great as he was, there was nothing James could do. The Warriors directed the entire defense at him, forcing him to get rid of the ball. And when he did, his lackluster supporting cast was not up to the task. This alley-oop to himself sums up perfectly the series against the Warriors and the entire 2018 playoffs. After the finals, it was revealed that James broke his hand in anger after game one, and that he played with a broken hand for the rest of the series. But even if he were fully healthy, it wouldn't have mattered. Legacy. Despite the fact that he lost in the finals for the sixth time, LeBron James proved that he's the best player in the world, and that at the age of 33, he was still able to drag a group of innocent bystanders to the championship round. Throughout the 2018 playoffs, LeBron was unstoppable in the clutch. He was 5 of 6, 83% on shots, to tie or take the lead in the final minute of the fourth quarter, including two game-winning buzzer beaters. LeBron had eight 40-point games in the 2018 postseason, the most by any player ever in a single playoff run. In 22 games, he notched 15 double-doubles and four triple-doubles, averaging 34 points, nine rebounds, and nine assists on unreal 54% shooting. James played the best, most intelligent, and most efficient basketball of his career in 2018, and he was statistically even better than in those years he won championships. It's just a shame that the Cavs wasted another year of his prime. During the finals, Warriors head coach Steve Kerr paid the biggest compliment to LeBron. They have a guy who is playing basketball at a level that I'm not sure anybody's ever seen before, even though Kerr famously played alongside Michael Jordan.